The following presentation was recorded live in Los Angeles, California for the 24th Annual Convention of the International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is tape 19, Teaching Techniques. I'm Walt Cooley, and I have with us Wayne Marvin and Doran McBroom. We're going to talk this morning about teaching techniques. Uh, you're not necessarily going to see a lot of, here's exactly how I teach this move. You're going to see some of that. There's a whole host of great uh, discussions and sessions going on right now, not at this minute, but during the convention on different aspects of teaching techniques. So each one of us is biting off a little piece of the thing to chew, and we're going to work our way through it. Um, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to uh, introduce the guys that we're working with here, and then uh, I'm going to turn it over to Wayne for a while, and then Doran, I'll come back and do a little summary. We will have plenty of time for questions and, and any other topics you'd like to bring up. And uh, we have a little space so that if we decide to get a square together, we can do that. Uh, reminder for all, when we do get into discussion, uh, if you want to ask a question, we've got to get it on tape. Uh, we're going to use this microphone because of the problems we're obviously having with the wireless. So as soon as we get into discussion, we'll ask that you, you come up in this area somewhere and we can get the mic to each one of you. And we'll just, we'll come down there if necessary and we'll pass this thing around so that we get it all captured. Well, Wayne Morvan is our... He's, this is our real resident expert for this thing here today. He's just putting the pressure on him a little bit. He can handle it. Um, he's been dancing 40 years, calling more than 30. In 40 states, uh, states five overseas countries, uh, he owns a couple of record companies. He's an accredited caller coach, chairman of the Choreographic Applications Committee, and a member of the Board of Governors, and we just figured we'd let him handle it. <laughs> Uh, Wayne has a lot of good ideas on, on the, the right things and the wrong things to do when you're teaching, and, and I'm sure we'll get a lot out of this, so I'm not going to prolong it. I'm going to turn this over to Wayne Morvan and let him talk with us for a while. Thank you, Walt. Okay, thank you. Uh, two fellows were walking down the street, and they saw a sign, Cruise, for thirty nine ninety five, And they went inside. They had to check on this, and, and the, the clerk asked, them, asked one fellow, Do you want to go on this cruise? It's just thirty nine ninety five. And he said, certainly I want to go on that cruise. So they took him in the back, beat him up, tied him on a log, threw him in the Sabine River. <laughs> so they asked the other fellow, you want to go on this cruise, Thirty nine ninety five? He said, certainly, you can't beat that price. So they beat him up, tied him on a log, threw him in the Sabine River. The log started floating down there, and they got pretty close, and one fellow hollered at the other, said, hey, you think they're going to have a square dance on this cruise? <laughs> the other fellow said, no, they didn't have one last year. Folks, there is only one thing important every class night. There is one thing important every class night. And I believe that that, that does not have anything to do with having taught a movement. The one important thing on every class night is that those folks have a good time and they look forward to coming back next week. That's the only thing that's important on a class night. And if they'll come back next week, if they have fun and they're looking forward to it, they're ready to coming back next week you will be able to teach them to square dance. But if you beat them up with the movements every night and make this thing not fun, but simply work, soon they're not going to look forward to coming back next week. And when they start that, soon they're going to drop out of your class. Okay? Uh, we have a lot of things. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about teaching, and I'm heading a little bit off from what the, the discussion said uh, in the breakdown, but I'm going to get there. But there are so many things that are important about teaching a class that do not deal directly with showing how to execute a movement. You start out with a good, reasonable recruitment. You need to get folks for your class. Uh, I see a lot of folks, and over the years, we went out on the street corners and we did exhibitions and we went to the malls and we did exhibitions. Square dancing is fun to watch for about five minutes, you know, and, and it kind of loses its luster after that. Uh, I have never gained anyone from doing an exhibition in a mall or street corner, never. When I have been given the opportunity to get the folks in the audience out there with me for ten minutes, I have gotten people into a class, but that makes the caller do his homework. You must be prepared. You must know how to handle the crowd that you're going to get in there that has absolutely zero experience 
at square dancing and showed them this is easy, this is fun, I enjoy this. I'm interested in doing more of this. Okay, I don't have to tell them it's going to take you X number of weeks to learn this activity. All I want those people to know is this is fun and this is where we're at. Okay, uh, Other things of recruitment that, that I see and I see very, very often is a club will have a class and so they will advertise that class in the local Square Dance magazine. Folks, everybody that reads the magazine, Square Dances. Uh, that, that's, that is not a real functional, uh, functional place to advertise that you're going to have a class. Get serious about putting flyers out recruiting to such activities, parents without partners. Go out, contact these people, go out and do an exhibition and get their folks up on the floor for a party time. Okay? Uh, things we have down in our area, uh, uh, newcomers groups. Okay, we're talking about some first night things. This is what we're talking about. Newcomers in the area, they usually have uh, civic committees that put on things for these people to get into the social activity of the new town that they've come to. Uh, we have uh, Cowboys for Christ in our area. Okay, these are good groups. Target these folks. Get flyers to them. Contact them. Go and do exhibitions and get their people out on the floor. Okay, show them this activity is good. Okay. These are some, some recruitment things. When you get the people willing to come and ready to come to your class, there are good, intelligent things that you should do. Understand they're new. They don't know anybody there. Even if we have got this word of mouth, a friend talking to a friend about square dancing, don't let them come by themselves. Go and pick them up. Bring them. If, if you can't bring them to the class, don't have them walk in the door by themselves. They don't know anybody inside there. They're concerned. This is new. They don't know anything about it. They're not sure if they can do it. They saw it on TV. It looks kind of complicated. They are very nervous. They're concerned. Meet them outside the door and walk in the door with them. They know somebody. They have an anchor to hold on to. Okay? Uh, I taught a class last year for a new club that, that I had started working for, and about midways in the class, I asked the officers of the club the names of those people in the class. I only had one square. That's eight people. No one knew the name of anybody in the class. No one. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were, yeah, our class. That's who these eight people were. Yes, our class, our students. Meet these people. Get to know them. Make them friends. Make them comfortable. Make them happy to be there. Make them look forward. Hey, yeah, I met old John and Karen over there. Let's, let's go out there and square dance. They were fun people. They were nice to be around. Make these, these people feel at home. Make them a part of your club, okay? Get them involved in your club from the first night if you happen to have your class on the same night as the club. I do because I call every night and I don't have another night to give simply to a class. If they dance the first hour, hour and a half, whatever, have them stay. Do one tip for them. Get them involved with the club sometime during the night. Have them stay. This is a social activity, folks. This is folks getting around with other good folks. Understand... When you bring these new people into the activity, there is a real, real big problem from the start. That problem is sometimes uh, they're wigwams. At other times, they're teepees. You see? Uh, you, you, they're two tents. <laughs> that was bad, wasn't it? <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> You've got to relax these people. You've got to make them feel at home. You've got to make them feel welcome there, folks. Okay? Do some things that for dancer retention, if you allow, and, and sometimes I get real weird looks when I say that, if you allow angels in your class, and, and some folks say, what do you mean if you allow it? You always have angels. No, folks, sometimes I will not let them come to my class. I will not. If you allow angels at your class, educate them before you ever start. Talk with these folks. Tell them what you want from them. Tell them what you expect of them. Tell them what you want not to have from them. Educate these folks, okay? 
educate them that when the music goes on, they are the first ones on the floor. All you need is six people that you got in this class. You worked so hard to recruit, and they have to stand there five minutes waiting for somebody to get in a square with them when you got 25 club members standing at the back watching them. And they're standing here saying, why don't these folks want to dance with me? You know, what's my problem here? Your angels should be the first one on the floor. They should go and invite these new dancers out to dance with them. It's not a matter of them going dance with the new dancers. It's a matter of getting the new dancers out to dance with them. Make them feel a part of your group. Okay? Uh, give, them, give them a guiding hand, but not a pushing hand. Right? Don't shove these people around the square. Uh, tell your angels... Educate them not to start a movement while you're explaining it. Okay, uh, You're giving a definition of the movement, and they start and move as you're giving the definition. I believe that the definition needs to be heard, and then explain to him, uh, to the dancers, how to go through the movement. And I'll cover that a little bit more here. But educate your, dan your angels. Don't move while I'm giving the definition. Stand and listen to the definition, and when I say go... Then we will all go. Okay? Start these new people in their dance being successful. Okay? Get them used to touching one another. I don't know these people over here. I don't know if I want to hold hands with these people. Okay? A lot of circle left and circle right works real well for me. Get them used to seeing one another. Face, boys face the girl on your right. Girls face the boy on your left. Give a right hand, pull by. Say hello, go to the next. Give a left hand, pull by. Greet each other as you go around. Get them used to being around one another. Okay? Uh, I suggest that you do not split up couples. And I suggest that very, very strongly. Don't take a, a man and his spouse and split them up. Okay? I am a shy person. Uh, that doesn't always come out, but that's a fact. And I like to dance with my wife, and, and I'm sometimes uncomfortable dancing with other people, okay? And particularly when these people are brand new, okay? I suggest that you give thought to allow them at least to dance with their spouse. I, I would strongly urge you from experience, if you do Yellow Rocks, stop it. If you teach Yellow Rock from the microphone, stop it. I urge you to do that for your own benefit. Okay. The first time, and it can go either way, I'm just going to put this out. I, I, I can't sit up here and, and uh, lecture and be concerned about which way I say things. Okay. You get, you get a young lady standing there, and she's in a position, she's either got to hug this guy that she doesn't want to, or she's got to look silly being the only one there that refuses the hug. you got somebody very, very angry at you. Okay. And the other way, too, if the man doesn't want to hug the lady. I, if they want to hug each other, fine, go right ahead. I don't care. But I'm not going to put any dancer in the position that they've got to hug the one next to them when they don't want to, or they have to look foolish in their own eyes standing there not doing it when everyone else is. Uh, we, we did this years ago. I dropped it years ago because I got burnt too many, many times. Go slow and easy from the start. Understand circle left, circle right, face you partner, pull by is complicated material for the brand new first night dancer. That's complicated material. We talk about doing good choreography, uh, doing interesting choreography. Circle half, pass through, and courtesy turn is very intricate choreography for a first night dancer. Okay, I believe from seeing that, that the dancers don't generally get bored. The caller gets bored. And so he starts doing wild things. The dancers usually don't. And understand, it takes very little to be complicated for a first night square dancer. Okay? Uh, they are very, very busy. Okay? I work at about 120 metronome beats per minute when I'm working with a class and early in the class. Uh, we generally work from about 126 to 130, and I think that's dropped now, recommended about 124 to 128. I go down almost to, to 120. Do you understand, folks, if they're taking a step to each beat of the music, 
at 120, they've taken two steps per second. These folks are, are running around there. They are moving. They're getting with it. Okay? Uh, they have to learn from the first to split their mental capabilities. Okay? They are not counting the beats and walking to that beat. That has to be something that you instill in them right from the start. Hear the beat, shuffle your feet, dance to the music, and circle left, circle right, alaman left, right and left grand, over and over until one side of their mind is dancing to that music while the other side of their mind has the opportunity to listen to you, to figure out what the call is, to remember how to do the call, and to execute that movement while this side over here has still got one foot going to each beat of the music. They are very, very busy people, folks. And, and they have to split those mental capabilities. It's the same thing with me what I'm calling. If you tell me I've got to figure out how to make interesting choreography and I've got to stand here and count each beat of the music so I can time the exact number of beats, I don't do that, folks. This side of the head has been programmed, listen to that music, stay on time, stay on beat, while this side's figuring out what I'm going to do with these dancers since I blew the last call. My, my mind said this and my mouth said that. Okay? Just because I'm over here working, this side's got to be taking care of itself. I have to have trained that to work on its own while this other side is working. You have to do the same thing with the new dancer. That new dancer doesn't know that they're working a lot of different places up in their mind. You have to train them to that music and get them dancing to the beat well enough so that they can, in fact, listen to you. Okay? Five minutes. Wow. And I got that much. <laughs> uh, presenting the movements. Folks, tell them where the starting point is. Tell them where the ending point is. It works very, very well for me to, at times, a scoot back in particular. I will tell them, trade with each other with a right hand. This is where you're going to end up. Now, trade back. <laughs> now, this is how you're going to get there. But let them know where they're going right from the start. they got a real good chance of getting there when they know where they're going right from the start. But if I tell them, those facing in are going to extend straight ahead, take whichever hand you meet with. If you went straight ahead, turn half around and come back to the other side where the dancer beside you was at while that dancer turned to get over in the place. Give them an idea where they're going, folks. Okay? And then give them the definition of the movement and then tell them how it's done. Okay. They've got a real good chance of getting to a place that they know they're going, if they know that's where they're going before they ever start. Okay. Teach them to dance. Keep them moving to music. Okay. Doing creative choreography. If, if you will, if you will do your homework, folks, you can call some tremendous choreography with the first 15 movements on the Caller Lab list. Uh, head step in the middle, pass through, face your partner, center circle half, pass through with the outside circle half, pass through, courtesy turn, circle left one quarter, pass through, courtesy turn, pass through, do a U-turn back, alaman left. That is extremely technical choreography for a first, second, third night square dancer, folks. You don't have to get into a rush to get to a spin chain through. Uh, all right? You don't need to get into a rush. There. All you got to do is do your homework. Again, I hear so many talking about the thing that I saw years ago. There is a point where it clicks and they start to, in fact, dance. What you've got to do is teach them to split their mental capabilities, start dancing. Once they have started dancing and they feel that they're dancing, that's when you get the click, and that's when you can go to the other choreography. But if you get to that intricate choreography before the click happens, you're going to have a fight the rest of the class. Teach them to dance. Simple choreography. You can have a blast with these people. And understand that this is good choreography for them when they've been square dancing three weeks. They don't know you to swing through. They don't know there is one. Okay. Do. Uh, I find it such a shame. I go to a national convention. we got a challenge hall. we got an advance hall. we got a, a plus hall, a mainstream hall, maybe. Then it's called DBD. We have no basic square dancing. We have a program, folks. It's called basics. 
And it's a good dancing, a good viable square dance program. It's there and it's always, it's been there as long as I've been around and I've been here forever. Okay. Give them a dance each week. This is not a class. Give them a dance each week and include a new movement in there. But give them a dance each week. Give them a party. Give them a party sometime during their learning session. And I don't like class members or students anymore. These are new dancers. Uh, this is where I wanted to come from. If we have time, I will show you how to use some of this simple choreography and this, the way that it is, in fact, easy to do if we have time. Thank you all. Thank you, Wayne. He's just begun. If, if, if you get a, get a few minutes, you can talk to, talk to Wayne. You can get a, a ton more out of this because he's got some great stuff. And we will. We, uh, as time permits, we may actually do a little bit out here, so we'll give him a chance to talk a little more. Um, Dorn McBroom, probably a lot of you know, there are certain things that you do in Color Lab that get you known, even if people don't know who you are. Being a quarterly selection chairman is one of those certain things. <laughs> Doran is chairman of the mainstream, or plus quarterly selection committee, excuse me. Uh, he's been calling for about 30 years, dancing for a long time, uh, doing a lot of neat stuff. Um, I asked him to give me more biographical material, and he gave me that much. He says, gee, when you put it down on paper, it doesn't seem like much. <laughs> Doran has done a lot. I'm going to turn this over to him and let him get into a little more. Now, do you want to square right away, or do you want to talk a little first? We're going to talk first. I'm going to have trouble standing still here, I'm sure. Yeah, Walt asked me about my bio right after Wayne had told him that he was a record producer and board of governors and chairman of this. And thinking, I've only been calling 30 years. I'm sorry, Walt. I don't know. <laughs> but I have done a, a quite a bit of teaching. I started my calling career I learned to call in the way I do not recommend people learn to call. That's by teaching. Many of us learn to call by teaching. The problem is, in order to teach people to dance to a caller, you need to know how to call in the first place. So developing your skills while you're trying to teach people to dance is a detriment to them. It's a detriment to the activity. So if at all possible, learn to call before you learn to teach. That brings me to part of the philosophy. I'd like to echo so much that Wayne had to say. Ah, covering just a bit of it, having fun. The first night of class on, from the very first night, having fun and having a dance. These people are learning to square dance. You can't teach them to square dance if you're lecturing to them. You know, if you're preaching this and preaching that. Dancing is moving to music, and that's what you need to teach them to do, to move to music. I've kind of learned that I don't concentrate so much on teaching choreography. I want them to learn the calls. I want them to learn how to react to the rules. But what they need to learn is how to listen to and respond to the caller. That involves a lot more than the choreography. It involves listening for the little cues, the little helping phrases that the caller throws in. You know, girls have a left hand and trade with that and on and on. So many different cues that a caller uses that a person that doesn't know how to call can't teach people to listen for because he doesn't know them in the first place. So have fun with your dancers. From the first night on, they should be dancing, moving to music. That's what I try to do from the very first night. I teach choreography as they're moving, kind of on the fly, as much as possible. Now, we do get to a point sometimes in some calls where you have to stop and you have to explain to them that you know, the specific rules to a call mean that you have to do it this way and you have to do it that way. And, but for the most part, teaching them to, to move to the music, teaching the choreography, means you have to do your work while they're moving. You kind of get them into an automatic routine where they're stepping to the music. And then you get them listening to you as they're stepping to the music. Now, they don't care whether, I don't care whether they're executing the call exactly correctly the first time I call it, the second time I call it. It doesn't matter. As long as they're listening to me and they're moving to the music, they're having fun, they're dancing, they're learning. Along the third week or the fourth week, when they're not doing uh, whatever properly, then I'll just stop the music and I'm going to say, okay, now when we do this call, you know, thus and so. I'll give them some rules and I'll try to make the, the movements a little more precise. But it's not something you want to lecture. People are not here for academic advancement. They're here for a recreation, to have fun. 
So keep your lecturing to a minimum as much as possible. Wayne talked about angels. The purpose of angels, and you need to relate this, is that they should fill the square. They should be at the correct place, at the correct time, with the correct handout, and a smile. And that's all. No help. Please, don't help me. <laughs> if they're listening to the angels explain the call that I just used, they're not listening to me. And that's what I want to teach them, to listen to the caller, to follow directions of the caller. So try and have your angels keep quiet. Fill the spot. Be there at the right time, with the right hand out, and keep quiet. <clears throat> Yellow rocks, I hope, that, uh, I hope you covered that well enough. <laughs> boy, that can be a problem. Boy, oh boy. I've seen it happen more than once, that people are offended by that. Okay, if we could, I'd like to get a square up here and just show you a few things that I go through. Can we get a square up? Well, if we have, do we have music? No. Does anyone have a record? <laughs> we don't. We don't need a record. Just <laughs> everybody clap. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> we have. Um, I'm just going to pick a few calls here. Um, yeah, it would be nice to have some music, but let's. Um, can you just tap your foot from here? Two, three, four, five. Okay. Head couples lead to the right and veer to the left. Bend the line. Right and left through. Okay, let me stop you here just a minute. We have, uh, I have a little bit of a conflict here in that I'm doing a session, I'm doing a panel next session, and I'm going to cover the very beginning of a class process and how we start to teach people to listen to the caller. We're going to move forward a little bit in that process here, and I'm going to step into, thank you. Step into some calls that come a little bit later. Sure. As long as it doesn't have a caller on the other side. <laughs> okay, put that put the other side on. <laughs> they got a lot of Yeah, that's fine. I uh I run my classes like a dance, just like Wayne said. It's a dance. Just real low. Real low. Which brings up another point. I very, very seldom take music off when I'm teaching a class. I turn it way down so that they'll listen to me, but I want that music there. I want them always feeling some kind of beat. <clears throat> Star through. Pass through. Trade by. Right and left through. Veer to the left. All the couples move forward to the next couple's position. Bend the line. And a right and left through. Now what have we done here, right? Eh? Star through. Pass to the center. In the middle, do a pass through. And right or left through. Veer to the left. All the couples move forward to the next couple's spot. Just fill their spot. Bend the line. Reverse butter. Whatever. Sweep a quarter. Veer to the right. And all the couples move forward to the next couple's spot. Now, I've taught them to call circulate. They know the basics of the call circulate. I've never said the word. I've never given them any rules whatsoever. But they know the call circulate. Bend the line. Star through. Pass through. Trade by. And just step to an ocean wave for me. Now, this is like three weeks before I intend to teach the call circulate. Okay? I've just thrown this in, and they've danced through it. They have no idea what they're doing other than following the words that I've given them. Later on, when I intend to teach circulate, I'll go back and give them some specific rules, and we'll get into an ocean wave. And I'll have, well, we've done it both ways now. We've had couples, we've reviewed it as couples circulate, as couples circulating counterclockwise. Now, just the men move forward to the next couple's, the next man's position. And we'll do this several times until we get kind of comfortable with it. Finally, I'll stop the music and I'll tell them. Now, look, guys, you have four corners of that square. That you're occupying positions of the square. And the call circulate, and you move forward to the next person's position in the square. All the guys circulate one place. Move forward to the next person's position. You keep repeating that call. Keep repeating the rule, what you want them to do in words. Ladies run around the guy. And all the couples circulate and move forward to the next couple's position. You give them the call and reiterate what, what it is you want them to do with the call. Bend the line. Star through. Trade by. Swing through. And we have the ladies on the outside now. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, actually, actually, I do. Actually, I do. You have to be careful with it. Sometimes you'll find somebody that can be offended, but, but for the most part, people will learn to play with it a little bit. And they all know they're going to make mistakes, and I don't ever try to hide my mistakes either, because I'm going to make them. You know, and you want them to let, let, let them know you're human, you know? Hey, we're all human. So sometimes it's a problem if you point someone out specifically. But 
quite often they can learn to play with it and have fun with it just like you do. All of the ladies move forward to the next lady's position, the next corner of the square. You're doing a circulate. Men run right around the girl. Okay, now we've gone through a couple of weeks of doing this kind of stuff, and they know how to do a circulate from couples and a circulate from the end of a wave. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. Men circulate on the outside. Now, we also have a box of four ladies in the middle, okay? It's in the center of the outside box. You ladies have a box of four people. In a box of four people, you can do a circulate. Four ladies move forward to the next lady's position in your box of four. Swing through. Now, for the most part, I haven't taken any time to lecture to them, to give them specific rules to a call. I just dance them through the, through the words that I give them, and they eventually learn that associating the rules and, and, the, and the word circulate means that you circulate. Men run right around the girl. Bend the line, touch quarter. We also have this kind of circulate. Everyone is looking at someone's back, except the end people. The end people will flip over. Everybody moves forward to the next person's position. Circulate once. And the men run right around a girl. Touch a quarter. Further down the road, about six or seven weeks, we want to get to the call split circulate. It's a little different, okay? The initial circulate, couple circulate, in circulate, that's no problem. From an ocean wave, the end circulate is not a problem. The center circulate is not a problem. When you put it all together, it becomes a problem. Okay? If I want the centers to circulate and the ends to circulate simultaneously, it becomes a problem. Um, have the centers you turn back. I usually approach it with having couples circulate. Couples circulate one place. Now just the ends circulate. Now just the centers circulate. And now the centers you turn back. Centers circulate again. Ends circulate. And we'll practice that several times, and then we'll say, all eight circulate. Center stay inside, center stay inside, outside stay outside, all eight circulate. I'll move forward to the next person's position. Okay, single hinge. Now, I'd like you to split your square in half so the two center men let go of each other and realize that you have a box of four people on each side. In that box, we can also do a circulate. If you're moving forward to the next person's position, moving forward to the next person's position in your, in your box of four, circulate one spot. Okay, and that's how we cover that. Single hinge. Centers trade, men run right, and um, find your corner. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, site resolution, past the ocean. Let me have a corner here somewhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, all eight circulate. <laughs> Square your set. <laughs> Walt, Walt whispered six or seven minutes. <laughs> um, heads star through. I'll keep it track. I'll keep it straight now. Uh, pass through. <clears throat> Step to an ocean wave. Uh, we've done the call swing through. We've covered that call. So they know how to turn half by the right with each other. I'd like the center two people to turn half with each other like you do in the second part of a swing through. And what we've done is the two ladies have traded places. Let me get some music on. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Swing through. And the men run right around the girl. Bend the line. Pass through. Face your partner. Step to an ocean wave. Swing through. Ladies circulate once on the outside. Men trade in the middle. Men run right around the girl. I'm not sure if I have the sequence here, but you get the idea. Bend the line. Pass through. Face your partner. Step to an ocean wave. Now, eventually, you're going to hear that that's a pass the ocean, but that comes later. Two center people trade places with each other. Just turn half with each other. Okay. Swing through. And the center two men trade places with each other. Okay. Men run right around the girl. Bend the line. Pass through. Now, trade is not usually a difficult call to teach. There's a hundred ways to do a trade. I'm exaggerating. But there are a lot of ways that you can trade. Partner trade is a difficult one for some reason. I've used the words, three rules that you follow every time you do a trade. You change places on the floor with someone, you change your facing direction, and if you have to pass someone head on, you do it with a right shoulder. Apply those rules to your partner. You're going to change places on the floor with your partner, you're going to change your facing direction, and you, if you have to pass them, which you do, you'll pass them with a right shoulder. With your partner, partner trade. Okay. Every time, I'll bet I echo those words 300 times in the course of a call. Every time I approach a, a different kind of trade, you'll change places on the floor, you change your facing direction, and if you have to pass, you'll do it with the right shoulder. Pass through. Later on, after we've done quite a few trades, this is a trade that I don't think many people show, at least from my experience, I have trouble calling it. 
I'd like the two ladies to trade places with each other. Apply the rules, right? Change direction on the floor, change places on the floor, direction as you go, and change, right? And you have to pass, you do it right. Men run right around a girl. Pass through. It's a nice way to get the waves, by the way. Two men trade places. Walk forward, trade places, change direction. Good. Centers circulate. I'm just throwing this in. Good. Centers, you turn back. Couples circulate. Bend the line. Star through. Mm, California twirl. Centers pass through. Slide through. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Centers star through and back away. Head couples lead to the right. Circle through the line. Break them out make a line. Walk into the middle and back. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Do a double pass through. I'm going to take a little bit of time on this one. On the call, track two. I caught a little bit of grief from somebody one time, and I'll explain it a little bit later. I'd like the center people. They have no idea what I'm talking about. Center people, I'd like you to put your hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you and couple up that way so we have the guys acting as one unit, ladies acting as another unit. That's called tandem, but you don't need to worry about that. And I'll do that sometimes. I'll throw in something that they may hear later on, but I don't insist on it. Two guys acting as one person, two ladies acting as another person. I'd like you to do a partner trade with each other. Okay, so the guys are moving to their right, ladies moving to their left. And we've done a trade in one unit. Let go of the shoulder, center people pass through, step to an ocean wave. We've done a track two, okay? Single hinge. Ladies run around the guy, star through, centers pass through. Okay, once again, and we've changed the positions here. The center people put your hand on the outside people's shoulder, and you've coupled up as in, in, so that the ladies acting as one, men are acting as another, do a partner trade. And then the center people, first of all, let go of the shoulder. Center people pass through and step to an ocean wave. Now, once you have them doing that a few times, then you go back and you show them, okay, now, guys, you're really moving on a track to your right on the outside, the person on the left-hand side, not necessarily the guy. That's the way I teach. And the ladies in this position moving on the inside track or to your left. But the initial application of the call, the initial way you get them through it, is by coupling them up and showing them something they already know. They already know how to do a partner trade. Um, swing through. Explode and pass the ocean right and left. Explode the way. Step forward, face in, right hand, pull by. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's plus. You got there. Right? Uh, yeah, right and left, Graham, but don't do it. Just take, step back home. Sure. Okay. One other thing I'd like to cover that I don't think a lot of people do either. Um, side couples star through, pass through. Uh, I meant to do it the other way. Slide through, pass through, bend the line. Star through. Yes, I'll stay with the mainstream. Okay. Um, we have boxes. Usually I do actually slide through. We'll make lines out of it. Do a slide through for me. Okay. Do a right and left through. Now do a right and left through again. One more time, do a right and left through. Okay, I'd like you to notice as you're doing that right and left through, you step right through an ocean wave. Okay, do this for me. Right and left through and notice you step right through an ocean wave as you're doing that call. Okay, pass the ocean please. And rear back, take a little step backwards and I'd like you to do a right and left through. Walk by, courtesy turn the person next to you. Okay. Notice again, you're stepping right through an ocean wave. Do it right and left through. Walk by, and you courtesy turn. But you're moving right through that ocean wave. We can do things from an ocean wave that we can do from facing couples. We can do things from facing couples that we can do from an ocean wave. There are a few exceptions, and you let them know there are a few exceptions. But, but for the most part, get them to realize that facing couples in an ocean wave can be equated. Okay? And you can do very similar things. Square through, right and left through, the most common. Okay, you'd, you'd really like to do that. Square through. But on the third hand, Jerry, <laughs> swing through. Now, first of all, I said square. Now I said swing. Um, -bum -bum. Recycle. It's clever. Yes, square through. Three square through. Three. Maybe I didn't enunciate properly. Good. Right. Those in the middle, left square through three. The outsiders, you turn back. And those in the middle, turn back and bow to your partner. Good. Okay. <laughs> How are we doing time once? One minute. Let me cover one other thing quickly. Side I, I left you okay. Side couples re sachet. <laughs> yes, I've been calling a long time. <laughs> Side couples step to the middle and face your corner. Okay. Um, step to an ocean wave. 
before I do the call spin the top, we've been doing swing through. And there's very little other that we've been doing in terms of uh, ocean wave turns other than a half. So I go through this little exercise. Before I ask him to do a three-quarter turn, I go through an exercise of having him turn. I tell them, first of all, turn half by the right. Now, with that same person, I'd like you to turn half by the right again. And notice that you've turned a complete turn with that person. Center two people turn half with each other. Now, they've been doing half turns for a long time, and they're pretty comfortable with that. So with the right hand, I'd like you to turn half twice. And notice that I don't give them time to turn half and turn half again. I tell them to turn half twice. So they have to listen to the caller as they're going through their action and realize what they're going to do next. I want them to learn what that full turn is so that I can start fractionalizing it. Okay? They already know how to half. Turn half, please. Center two people turn half. Now I'd like you to, with the right hand, to turn one half of half or turn one quarter. We have the men facing out, ladies facing in. You give them some kind of cue. Men run right around the girl in this case, past the ocean. Mm, yes, okay. Turn half by the right. Centers turn half by the left. And then we get into, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, but you have to keep working on it, okay? That quarter turn comes very quick. I like you to turn one quarter or half of half. Men run right around a girl. And pass the ocean one more time. If I ask you to turn three quarters, that's half and halfway back to where you came from. Okay, so it's almost a full turn. Turn three quarters with the right hand. Turn half and then halfway back. So you get the quarter down first, and then you move on to the three-quarter turn. This is all before you do spin the top. Okay? The first time they see a three-quarter turn is we spin the top. Okay? Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Good night. Very good. Got some neat stuff there. And some of you got to stretch a little bit, so you got a double bonus there. Uh, I got I want to hit on a few things that they've said, and I'll take a minute to tell you about myself first. Um, I'm the chairman of the Mainstream Quarterly Selection Committee. I think I may be the longest-lived chairman of a quarterly selection committee, as a matter of fact. I've been in it since sometime in the late 80s. I ain't dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long story. Um, I have not been calling for 30-some years. I've square danced on and off for 41 years, give or take a little. I've uh, been calling since I got in a situation overseas where I wanted to square dance, my wife wanted to dance, and we had three squares who wanted to dance, but we were the only ones who had ever danced. And so it was, you know what you're doing, you're the caller. Uh, that's been gee, about 20 years. Uh, I call exclusively clubs. I don't call hoedowns. Uh, I've tried it a few times, and I discovered that that's not my style. So for those in that situation, you join the club. I don't really call festivals. Uh, I took a look the other day and figured out that I've got about 6,000 hours of teaching time under my belt because I've had a class with every club for every year I called, and I average about 150 nights a year for the last 50, 15 years. <laughs> which he didn't explicitly say, but I want to explicitly say it, even though it sometimes it creates debate, and that is, definitions do not equal dancing. The definitions of our movements are very, very important because they are the, the coin, if you will, by which we, we deal. We need to understand the definitions in order to all be on exactly the same page when it comes to discussing choreography and the subtleties and the trouble you can get into. As your dancers become better and better, they also need to understand the definitions precisely, especially if they intend to make a much greater hobby of this than just the recreational dancer. But definitions do not equal dancing. If you talk to some of the callers who have gotten into the art of programming computers to square dance, one of the things you discover quickly as a programmer is that if you precisely follow the definitions, the little dolls don't get where they should be because there's always a little bit of adjust and fix and we move over there are things we do as dancers which make the definitions work and so it's very important as you're teaching and when you do things like Wayne talked about and Doran talked about that you bring the people through the flow of the dance so that they understand how to flow and then give them the definition as a means of them categorizing the thing and understanding it better but don't kid yourself into thinking that you can make them memorize a definition and they will dance because they, 
it does not compute. The definitions are really more important for us than they are for the dancer. Uh, another thing, we talked about yellow rocks, and I'm in the same situation. I don't call yellow rocks. Now, the honest truth is, I did not make the painful discoveries that some of you have made. The honest truth is, I'm even shyer than Wayne. If I don't have this thing under my mouth, I don't know how to talk. And I have never been able to create that atmosphere of camaraderie and fun that some callers create by calling things like yellow rock and other stuff. Um, but you can do it. How many of you in the clubs you call for have at least one person, and I have to admit it's usually a man, who is a cut-up, loves to have fun, loves to goof off, is always doing something silly in the square, okay? I call this person the club scapegoat. I always have a few club scapegoats, and if I do go out to call a dance, which I rarely do, but I do it now and then, one of the first things I look for is who is the local scapegoat? Who's the guy that people say, Oh, you better be careful in that square because, uh, you know, Joe is in that square. And I use that in my classes to break down this fear of the dancers that they're going to fail. Charlie Kiefer, and he's going to love being on tape because this is a real dancer. Charlie Kiefer gets up in this square, and I look out on that square, and I say, Boy, my sympathies are with you guys. you got Charlie. He's a very good dancer, but he loves to kid around. And if something goes wrong in a square, I'll look back there in the back of the room somewhere, regardless of which square broke down, and I said, Charlie, what did you do? <laughs> because I'm trying to build this, and I can't do it any other way. I can't do the song and dance on the stage. I need someone out there doing the song and dance for me. But you do that with your classes, because you very early want to get over the fear. When I get people going in a one-night type thing, you know, the first night of classes, um, now, for me, the first singing call happens about 20 minutes after the people first hear music, give or take a little. If I don't have them dancing to a singing call in 20 minutes, I've failed. But one of the first things you do is you stand them up there and say, well, you know, we're going to do this, something called a singing call here, and for me to sing this song, I've got to sing it from the start to the end. If something goes terribly wrong in your square, don't convene a meeting to figure it out. Now, if I, this is a church group, I say don't have a meeting of the deacons to figure it out, but don't convene a meeting, just find your partner. And I said, now, you've got to understand, one of us is going to mess this thing up at some point in the night. You will do it some, I will do it some. No matter which one of us messes up, you've got to go find your spot and get dancing again. So you've got to break this stuff down. Um, the other thing that I want to emphasize, and we saw it with what they were talking, was our, our choreography has the commonplace and the exceptions. And when I say commonplace, I don't mean boring. There is the usual stuff. It's the Damon Run Runyon thing, guys and dolls, you know. The, the race, I can't quote him exactly, the, the race does not always go to the swift and the, and the battle to the strong, but that's the way to bet. <laughs> and it's the same thing in square dancing. Ladies do not always end up on the inside of the ocean wave after past the ocean, but that's the way to bet, okay? I consciously, as I take the dancers through, I make a point of saying, you know, first of all, Dorn and I have never worked together, but we would work great because I do this. I play with the dancers a long time before I tell them what it is they're doing so that they're doing it before I define it. But then when I get in there, I say, now, folks, 99% of the time you're going to see this. And I'll even show them some of the styling tricks that allow you to cheat a little. You know, like when you pass the ocean, the ladies touch your left hands. But I tell them, now... This does not work all the time. There are positions from which this is not the way it's going to be. But here's the one where it does work. Because the people are going to see certain situations more than others. I want them to understand that. But I'm focusing on the things that will make them dancers the highest percentage of the time. Which brings me to my thesis and something I want to talk about a little bit. Um, and we have, by the way, a lot of handouts up on this table from many sessions and teaching techniques, and I've got one here I put together called Teaching Your Friends to Dance. In this room, and for those on the tape, you all know what a normal meeting room looks like. We have a whole bunch of chairs facing me. We have an aisle down the middle. If I look across the side, there's six or seven chairs on each side. I believe strongly that with the demands we have on our time and the limited amount of teaching available to us, especially the fact that so many of us have no choice but to teach our classes on the same nights with our club. 
that the way to get there is what I like to call the riverboat approach. Those on the tape, you can mentally visualize this. You, you watch the riverboat go down the river, and the riverboat goes straight down the river, and it generates a wake, the ripples that go to the side. And those ripples spread out, and they eventually reach the banks of the river on both sides, but they don't reach the bank of the river until the riverboat is a mile downstream. You all with me? If I go down the middle of this room, I go straight to the door. I do not start over here with John Sanborn on the right-hand corner of the first chair and work my way across the front row and then to the next row. I go straight down the room. This is what I refer to as the riverboat approach to teaching. Practically speaking, what that means is I do as Doran does. I introduce people to the flow of the dance. I introduce them to the movement and give them the definitions. But I focus on standard applications. Not exclusively, but my first introduction to everything is a pretty much a standard application. Then as they learn, I let the ripples work their way out to the edge of the river. So for example, uh, the first time I do a swing through, it's going to be a pretty standard application. The second or the third night, I get them in another little position and I give them a swing through again. Fourth or fifth night, it comes back again. As they progress through the class, they go down the main path. They follow the riverboat and they learn to dance. And as they get more and more confident, I work the ripples out through the other six or 16 or 24 variations of the call. But not all at once. Because frankly, and this is all a matter of style, we all have what we do well. I don't teach hobby dancers. Now, what's a hobby dancer? A hobby dancer is the person who is perfectly willing to be out there six nights a week because to them the definitions have fascination and it is a true thing they love to do. I lose hobby dancers because I'm a little too loose at times for them. I teach primarily recreational dancers. And they like that stuff. They like the complex choreography, but primarily they like to move to the beat of the music. The kinds of people who gravitate to my clubs love moves like Relay of the Ducey, provided I give them good music to dance it to. And don't call it every two seconds. Okay? So, you want to go with the riverboat approach is, is the way I prefer to do it. And fundamentally what I'm talking about is I break square dance teaching into two parts. What I consider the basics of square dancing and what I consider to be um, workshopping. And I'm not referring to the basic list. To me, teaching means taking people through the basics all the way through, and then as we work through it, workshopping the variations, but not teaching all the variations initially. What else did I have for notes? I think I'm almost there. Um, I think that's the big part of it. Uh, you want to teach people to dance. Oh, yes, I knew there was one other thing on my mind. Styling. You have to teach dancers to flow to the music. Wayne said a lot about this, of reaching for that point where everything clicks. Sometimes you have to actually teach that. And I actually have a few singing call figures, and there's nothing exotic about these things. Uh, one example is uh, square through, do si do to a wave, ladies trade, swing through, boys run, bend the line, start through, swing your corner. Nothing exotic, okay? But very early on in my classes, I'll get the dancers out there and I'll say, okay, guys. I want you to dance to the music. So I'm going to teach you a singing hall figure. And I take that one I just recited, for example, and I literally walk them through it a few times. Then I tell them, okay, here's the situation, guys. We're going to dance to the music. I am going to keep the calls one to two beats ahead of you. Thou shalt not catch up. If you catch up with me, I'm going to turn up the speed. What I want you to do is I want you to move your feet to the music, flow with the dance. You should never have to stop walking through this whole singing call. And I want you to feel the dance. And I make them do it. And then when they get there, I see, now see what you've just done? See how that feels? This is what you're supposed to do, and I don't want you guys to ever try and catch up with me again. You should always be a beat or so behind me. And I said, if you do catch up with me, and you're dancing smoothly, then I've screwed up. And that's my job to take care of that. 
Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, classes and graduation. And Wayne brought up a neat point about, does everyone know the name of the class people? I have always been forced in the situation of doing class on the same night with club. The club dances with the class. Before we form the class, they get the lecture that Doran and Wayne give them. Dose I dose will be back to back and, until further notice. <laughs> Circle to a line will mean that you raise the arm and the lady walks under until further. I give the club dancers this lecture. I give them the lecture of you will not reach out and grab the hand. You will arrive in the correct position. You will have the correct hand available, but you will let them discover that they are there. So I prepare my dancers to be angels. Then when we dance, they dance with them. And way before graduation, we dance together. And this is something you have to bring the clubs to accept sometimes. Uh, my plus group, I have a mainstream group and a plus group. My plus group started a class in September, and they have it right on their calendar. Beginning the first dance in April, they dance together. There is no longer a class section of the night and a club section of the night. For those who wonder, no, I have not gotten through the list. I'm about maybe halfway there if I'm lucky at this point. But the new dancers are good enough dancers that they can have fun with the club. And yes, I'll have one or two tips some point in the evening where I warn the new dancers, you ought to sit this one out because there's some things I'm afraid the club will forget <laughs> if I don't call them. And I can say that because if you create this atmosphere from the beginning, make the people have fun, you can get away with talking about your club that way and they love it. Hey, we're going to open this thing up for questions. Uh, we're going to have to ask that those with questions come up here and, and just maybe come up on the side and join us and we'll hand you the microphone. Uh, we want you to, to state your name and where you're from and ask your question. And if you want to direct it at one of us, you can choose you know, who you'd like to direct it at. We have a few minutes. We've got about 10 minutes. And uh, come on up. Let's have some questions. Come on up. Yeah, just, just go ahead and come up and make a little line if you even like, and I'll just hand you the mic. Hi, I'm Ron Hirsch from San Francisco. This is about classes in general, not about particularly teaching. With when you do a graduation for your mainstream people or a plus, do you guys usually have the instructor who ever taught do the graduation or do you call in a guest caller and what do you think are the pros and cons of each? Well, it's, um, I teach the class I call for the club, I do the graduation. Typically that's, you know, I, I want to incorporate it as much as possible for myself. A guest caller is nice to have, but the graduation night is kind of a personal thing with the class and the club, so that's the way I handle it. <laughs> Alex Stevens, Christchurch, New Zealand. Two questions. Do you folk use the call Grand Slide as a lead up to Grand Square? And do you have an easy way to verbally explain circle to a line? I don't mean the circle halfway, but I mean the bit after that. This is your turn. <laughs> don't forget the Grand Slide bit. Alex, in two weeks I'll get even with you for this. <laughs> uh, I don't know what a grand slide is. I, I've read it somewhere, but I don't remember. So that answers that first question. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I do not use a grand slide as a lead up to a grand square. And I'm serious, I don't remember what it is. I, I, yeah, I think they, they join hands and just slide out. And say, yeah. No, I, I, I must say, in all seriousness... No, I teach every movement exactly properly. Uh, I, okay. And the answer to do I have any good verbal techniques on how to teach circle to a line, my verbal technique is, here, folks, I'm going to come down there and show you how to do this. <laughs> that, I, I have not come up with a good verbal technique for doing that, Daryl probably has. I go on the floor and show them how it's done. Daryl Clendenin. Uh, before I teach circle to a line, I always teach them circle half. I always teach them beer left. I always teach them California twirl. Now, if they can lead to the right, face the other couple, they circle half. They are going to veer to the left. And the couple that are facing out are going to California Toro. And you can want, talk them through it pretty much that way and then get those uh, couples to hold hands, the, the ones that are going. What, what am I doing, dear? Uh, 
Okay. Uh, that, you, you're going to add something to that? I, I had something else I wanted to ask. Okay. Very quickly. Can I get two couples? We don't have a lot of time. But I just need two couples right here. Yeah, I do too. And uh, I just want to show you one thing. Okay. Um, I make them so you're facing me and facing away. Head position. Okay. Here's my couples. The couples with the back to me are the, are the ones on the outside of the square. Okay. Okay. I'd like you to join hands and circle halfway. Now, we are going to make a line, and the inside lady, who happens to be Jerry, the inside lady is going to end up over on the right here, facing all of you in the chairs. Now, here's what we're going to do. You will all hold hands. Chuck Hardy will all hold hands. Chuck Hardy will back around. Jerry is going to walk straight to that corner. In order for Jerry to walk straight to that corner, Chuck has to let her walk under his arm. Go. There's your circle to a line. And then I point out to them, of course, that they've got to adjust a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Let's keep our couples there. I have a little, a little different approach than, than Daryl does. If I have, let me have a head on the side here. One way or the other. Good. Okay. We have... Um, this is one of the times where I do take the music off and I do lecture because it, it's a little technical call and it takes a little bit of it, pre precision to get it accomplished properly. I'm going to ask the head couples to, to lead to the right. Don't do it yet. Lead to the right and circle to a line. And what that means is you're going to go to the, to the side couples. Head couples are going to go to the side couples and visit with them. You're going to make a line at their position. Okay? You're going to join a line with them. If the side couples lead to the right, they're joining the line with the heads, which means the lines will be at the sides. Head couples lead to the right. And I'd like you to join hands and circle halfway around. Now, at this point, the couple that's in the center, uh, without letting go of hands, the outside man let go of the hand of, of your, uh, yeah, the one who led, right? That's your partner. The inside couple, this is the important part, the inside couple face your partner. And you're going to do an action very similar to a star through, except that the men are not going to move forward. Okay? And guys, you're going to have to back up with your partner as she walks out to the end of the line. Make an arch, let the lady walk over the man's arm. And you walk out and join your line. The other couple has to slide to the left a little bit to adjust. Okay? And that's how we make a line. Thank you. Carol, one more, and then we'll move on down here in comments, questions. Oh, I, I'm on a question. Or a, or a quest. I'm not sure. This is Daryl Clendenin again, anyway. Uh, I, I wanted to say, uh, on the Internet, uh, Square Dance College Bulletin Board, I, I'm sure that a lot of you watch that. Uh, I ran across this year something that... I, amazed me that I had never thought of it before for teaching, but that was the Sicilian Circle. And Lord, have I used that thing this year. Uh, how many of you used that in your beginner class? Oh, why didn't you tell me? Oh, what a deal, what a deal for, for uh, beginners, brand new beginners to get them out and move them around the floor and so many things that you can do from that circle. Uh, for those of you who might not know what it is, if you were to have... A, uh, have everybody make a large circle around the floor and then have two couples bend to face each other, the next two couples bend to face, you'd have uh, two couple sets in a large circle around the floor. And for teaching things like uh, right and left through, square through, circle half, veer left, veer right, ladies' chains, uh, the two ladies' chains, flutter wheels, on and on and on, at least 80% of the list, the teaching in that uh, formation in the Sicilian circle is so good because you can work them with a couple, move to a new couple, it splits them up. If you have an uneven number of squares, if you have three couples, you can still get everybody on the floor and each time you move on to the next couple, there, there might be one couple that's inactive, but everybody else is in on the teaches, in on the dancing. It is just absolutely wonderful. We'll try for a couple more questions here. We've got a couple people. We're running out of time, but... You may comment on it, sir. Yes. Dick Kurtz from Virginia. Uh, I, I don't know which one of you said it, but showing the ending position of a call is how I teach circle to a line. I have the head lady, if I'm going to have heads lead to the right, I have the head lady go over and stand beside your corner. And I have the head gent go over and stand beside your partner. Now adjust your line so that you're straight across from each other. And remember this position, because this is where you're going to end up at the next call. Uh, Bill Silver from Sacramento. I have a question regarding the call run. When we teach it normally, 99% of the time, from the ocean waves, or if we have the boys run, they're going behind. Inevitably, we do have situations where we teach it so where 
the people are facing the same direction. And even with seasoned dancers to this day, I see cheating. You know, they'll go behind. Or, what's a good teaching technique to emphasize that part of it? I'll tell you one thing that I do. I teach run not from what the dancers recognize as ocean waves initially. My first teach of run, I'll do uh, head square through, star through, we now have lines, pass through, we have lines facing out. I teach run from there. And the first time I teach it, I'll have the men run around the ladies and run around the ladies again. In other words, we, I, I get them into this traffic pattern. They don't even know what an ocean wave is. I actually move run ahead of the ocean wave specifically because I want to get this action down. One, one comment on that. Uh, a run I teach is a forward movement, and, and I start out early with these dancers, and I will have them all in a line. I'll say, now, everybody do a U-turn back. And they'll all turn around and say, now, notice, there is nothing back there that you want. <laughs> there is nothing back there for you. Now, turn back around. From now on, everything we do is going to be straight ahead. There's nothing back there that you want, folks, so forget it. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Jim Watts from Maryland. Uh, last year, in one of these sessions, I was listening, I listened to the tape a couple of times. Randy Dougherty describes what he does. He brings a hula hoop to class, and he puts that girl standing inside that hula hoop. That boy has to walk around the edge of that. That's the traffic pattern for him. The one other thing you can do, which I do, is I actually walk around my calling table to to one side so that my back is to the dancers. And I point out to them that I have two choices. I can run around the table, or I can fall off the stage if I decide to go behind it. <laughs> I think, this is the right way. Uh, we're, we're really out of time, but we'll certainly talk some more here, and I'll entertain some more questions. But if you've got somewhere to go, we are at our time limit.